Hello class. Let's go over this example in utility maximization. Like most examples, this is a two-part example. First, we need to be able to figure out what our consumption bundles are for this consumer and illustrate a budget line. Secondly, we need to determine which of these bundles is going to give us our optimal consumption in terms of utility. This is what we call utility maximization. Let's start with letter A. Which consumption bundles can this person consume if he spends all of his, all his income? Illustrate your answer by drawing the budget line. So, let's start with the consumption bundles. For the consumption bundles, we have to keep in mind two things. First, how much money we have in our budget. In this case, it's $50. And secondly, we need to know what the price of each item is. In this example, a notebook is $5 and a CD is $10. We must remember our assumptions in utility maximization. The key assumption here is that we must spend all our money to maximize our utility. Let's begin. Let's get our first one. Since notebooks are $5 each, the maximum amount of notebooks that we can get is 10. This is if we don't spend any money on CDs. Notice that if we multiply 10 notebooks times the price of $5, this will give us our $50 budget. This is how we're going to calculate all our bundles. Here are the rest of our bundles. Notice that for each bundle, we satisfy our condition of spending our $50 budget. If we get our budget, which is $50, And divided by the price of notebooks, which is 5, we will be able to get the intersection of our budget line with the y-axis. Similarly, we can get our x-axis intersection by dividing, again, our budget, which is $50, by the price of CDs, which is $10. The intersection can be described as M, our budget, divided by the price of good X. We can then illustrate our budget line. Again, this looks very similar to something we've done before, which is our PPF model. We can take our bundles that we got before and basically illustrate them on the graph as well. Basically, this is what letter A is asking for. Let's move on to letter B, which is the more interesting question. We must understand that all these bundles are possible for consumption, but this consumer must choose between bundle A, B, C, D, E, and F. This consumer will always choose the consumption bundle that gives him or her the highest possible utility. There are two approaches to this. Let's go over the easiest approach. Bundle A contains 10 notebooks and 0 CDs. Therefore, we must get the utility we get from 10 notebooks and from 0 CDs. Let's look at our table. 10 notebooks gives us a utility of 250, while 0 CDs gives us a utility of 0. This means that our total utility for bundle A is 250. T 
TU stands for Total Utility. Let's figure out what each of these bundles gives us in terms of total utility. We now have the total utility for every bundle. It is easy to see that in this example, the bundle that gives us the most utility is bundle D. In order to solve letter B, we need to be able to determine the marginal utility per dollar of each good. Why do we need to know this? Because the optimization rule is that in order to maximize utility, you must take the marginal utility of good X divided by the price of good X and it has to be equal or as close as possible to the marginal utility of good Y divided by the price of Y. So in this following table, we must get first our marginal utility and then divide our marginal utility by the price of each good. This analysis will give us more proof that our previous work was correct. Remember that from our previous work, we found that in order to maximize our utility, we need to consume a bundle of four notebooks and three CDs. Let's calculate the marginal utility. In order to calculate marginal utility, we must get the change in utility divided by a change in quantity. In order to calculate marginal utility, we must get the change in utility divided by the change in quantity. Let's start from 0 to 2. Here we have a change in quantity of 2. Let's figure out what the change in utility is. Look at the table. The change in utility is from 0 to 70. So we have a 70. Therefore, our marginal utility per dollar at 2 units is equal to 70 divided by 2 is 35. Let's do one more together. When we go from 2 to 4, again, we are dividing by a change of 2. And the change in utility is from 70 to 130, meaning 60. 60 divided by 2 is... Let's list down the rest of the marginal utilities. We can do a similar analysis with CDs, however, the change in quantities, if you notice, is always by 1. Look at the table. Therefore, all we really need to do is subtract here. So the first marginal utility is 80, 70, the marginal utility per dollar for each of the goods. We just have to divide by the price of each good to calculate this. Let's do the same thing for CDs. Remember, the 
price of CDs is $10. So now, notice that at our bundle, the margin utility per dollar of notebooks is six and six, which satisfies our original optimization rule, which is the marginal utility of notebooks divided by the price of notebooks must equal the marginal utility of CDs divided by the price of CDs, which is which in this case is 6 equals to 6. Now, you might be wondering why we don't choose this combination. After all, the margin utility is equal, but let's analyze that further. For that 4, we have a quantity of 8. And for this 4, we have a quantity of 5. What assumption am I breaking now? I am breaking the assumption of using my budget. Notice that in order to consume 8 notebooks and 5 CDs, we would need to be spending 8 times 5 dollars plus 5 times 10 dollars. This combination would require that I spend 90 dollars. Remember that my budget is 50. Let's pick another example. What about 7 and 7? Isn't that a marginal utility per dollar that is equal? Well, let's analyze again. In order to consume that bundle, I would be spending two units at a price of $5 plus two units at a, time, at a price of $10, $30. Remember our original assumption. Even though this is in our current budget, in order to maximize utility, we must spend our entire budget. If we don't, we are breaking one of the rules of utility maximization.